So, part two. Part two. Uh, yeah, we're going to separate this out into a few videos. So, let's start with the Chaos, the Chaos, which has um, basically been the only army I've played pretty much the whole time I've played Warhammer since my resurrection a few years ago. I mean, um, you've told me you have other armies, but I think yeah. I've only seen some Iron Warriors mm -hmm. and a lot of Nurgle. Yeah, that's mostly what I play. Iron Warriors and a lot of Nurgle. And the Iron Warriors aren't even Iron Warriors. That's my 30k death card that I'm using as Iron Warriors. So, they yes. have a nice creamy texture to them. Oh, they do. So, um, as for standardised rules, they're very little difference from the rules that you get in the Chaos Space Marine Codex. They still have Death of the False Emperor, they still have their Demonic Rituals. Legions and marks and things all work the exact same way. So no changes there. New units, however. Um, Chaos Space Marines in here, I'll go over them very quickly now because it's, it's a side note. The Chaos Space Marines, this is just a, a fixed profile for what could be taken in a Chaos Space Marine unit. So, so you could build this out of the existing Chaos yes. Space Marine Codex? There is no reason why you couldn't build this out of the existing Chaos Space Marine Codex. The, the question then, James, is would you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think I would. No. Um, the autocannon and the plasma gun are nicely matched. I think they're, they're good. They're both strength 7 uh, AP minus weapons. Mm -hmm. So they're both closely matched. But um, you either, you kind of, you want to leverage the fact that you can take two special weapons and you can take two heavy weapons if you're taking care of space marines. So you, when you get to five, you're allowed one special weapon as normal um, or heavy weapon. Um, and when you get to 10, you can take two. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to take a 10-man unit, you either want two auto cannons or two plasma guns. You want one or the other, um, and they're both good options. I don't think they're bad options, I just don't think you want both. You don't really want the chain axe on the sergeant, there's better choices. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, they're, they're completely stock, completely standard. I have a real love-hate relationship with plasma guns in eight. <laughs> um, because, and it's again back to that, you know, the problem with power armor, mm -hmm. isn't it? Is against armies that I can reliably do well against, like yes. space marines, uh, and, and other people without invuln saves, mm. plasma guns are really good. If yes. I can reroll my wands and I've got no penalties to hit, yeah. this is a great weapon. Yep. As soon as there's a minus one to hit, the plasma gun becomes a terrible weapon. As soon as there's a plus one to hit, it becomes an auto take. As soon yes. as there's a minus one to hit, it becomes complete rubbish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the armies that are going to beat me mm. are minus one to hit. Generally. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to the new units that we have here, and the altered units. So, a new unit we have is the Master of Possession. Master of Possession is a new character model, it's a HQ. Um, it is not a demon, which was notable, because everything else in here except the Chaos Space Marines themselves, who are a troop choice, is a demon, and it's a leader of a demon army. Uh, I understand that as a fluff choice because they're not actually demons, they're people who work closely with demons. <laughs> um, Bring the demons. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they basically just torture a lot of people until a demon turns up, or um, true name is a thing that they do, where, right. where, where they know the demon's name so they can lock it into a cage. Um, but yeah, they, they read tomes of ancient knowledge and then summon demons, they don't become them. Because that's how you do it, right? Somebody once wrote it down in a book. Yeah. So how did he, he find... Oh, we forget. So, well, actually, no, it, according to the fluff in this book, quite a common way of doing it is to summon a lesser demon who happens to know their name and then torture them until they tell you. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so you get the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome with sticks. <laughs> it's nice. Stand Standardised way of doing it. So, yeah, anyway, that's, that's fluff. Who cares? Okay. Um, Master Possession is, uh, he is a Chaos Space Marine. There is no change to his profile. Um, he has four wounds and three attacks, so he is uh, a Chaos Space Marine Lord, really. That's not a Sorcerer profile. Um... No. It's higher wounded than a sorcerer. Um, I'm not, because I have only played yeah. Death Guard rather than Care Space, yeah. so I, it, it's difficult for me to compare the, the profile. It's a more Lord profile, but it's also more Lord points. Um, mm. The only additional rule that it has, so it has Demonkin, which gives it a 5 plus invulnerable save. A Lord would have a, a Sigil of Corruption, which is the 4 plus. It's, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. so it's got a worse invulnerable save. Um, and its only additional rule is that uh, psychers suffer perils of the warp on any psychic test roll of a double within 12 inches rather than just a double one or six. Which is quite big in a quite psycho heavy meta. It is. Um, the 12 inch range I, I see as a problem. If this guy's only rocking four wounds. He's probably up in your face. Yeah. I think if, uh, if this army's built the way I intend to build this army and I think the way it's intended to be built, you're going to be right up in their face the whole time. Yeah. That Master of Possession is either not going to be an important unit to take out, or not the closest unit. <laughs> right, right. And now, the, the other thing is with these with these rules, I'm, I'm not sure how this works. 
Uh, perils on any double, but what if you got plus one to your psychic test? It's a natural double, to my understanding. So, so you'd have to roll a double four, a double three, a double two, a double Yeah, three. but if I've got plus one and I rolled a double four, did I roll a five and a four? No. You rolled a, an eight plus oh, one. Uh, you rolled an eight plus one? <laughs> yeah. You think, you think that's yeah. how it's going to be? I'm uh, 100% yeah. sure that's how that works. You rolled a double. It doesn't matter what modifiers you have because the roll comes before the modifier. It does, doesn't it? Because as we get yes. that, that sort of re-rolls with minuses or pluses yeah. to hit. Yeah. As in, so the roll is, is, is separate from the results. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Notably, it manifests two. It can cast two psychic powers and, and dispel one, which with the psychic powers that are in this book, and we're going to go over both of those for both in a, in yeah. a separate video, um, is, is very important. Uh, and of course, you know, smite. <laughs> so his psychic discipline is not associated with any mark of chaos he might have taken, no. uh, and he doesn't have access to Dark Hereticus. He's got his own, its own, his own thing. Its own little there. thing. Uh, no, wait, that's actually incorrect. Okay. Um, Two psychic powers from Malefic, which is specifically this book. That's okay. the new one. Yeah. Um, one second, sorry. Before the blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's only Malefic. So you, the uh, sorcerer from the Chaos Space Marine Codex doesn't have access to these. No. Okay. okay. That's There's something that was worth checking. I, th I think it's worth pointing out with this this model. Mm. Uh, I think we should we should spend a moment to yes. talk about. He looks like he should be on the cover of an Alice Cooper album or something like that. Yes, he, his lips are venomous poison. It's like, I'm skulls, I'm on fire, uh, I am totally metal circa 1980. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's a very, very cool model. Uh, it's yes. got skulls on his skulls on his skulls. Yeah, and, and they're it. burning. And they are on fire. Except the skull on his head. He's not silly. Health and safety is still relevant. So you probably can't just dry brush this dude a little bit and say he's good. There's no. a lot of... There he is. The, the easy parts that there are on, on painting these models as Empress children, which is what I'm going to paint them up as, which I've never painted before, so that'd be a laugh. Um, the big open panels is where you put the pink. Right. They, don't, they don't seem to care where the pink goes as long as there is there's, pink on their arm. There's got to be a lot of it. There's no, there's no real uh, strategy to it. The bits that you know is that you definitely paint their shoulder pads pink. So right. every time you do a shoulder pad, it's pink with a black border. You don't put any trim on it, it's pink on black. Okay. This guy has fur all over his shoulder pads. Fur? <laughs> so I have to paint the fur. Oh, he is. It's quite it's hairy, very, isn't it? Yeah, it's very it's quite fur. hairy. I think there's, there's sort of a, a shamanistic look that they were going for on these models oh. um, to work with the fact that they work less with um, the ether and more with sort of natural chaos. Right. And, and is, is that kind of tying into the, the pre-heresy... There's, so, there's no pre-heresy connotations here no, at all, no, it's just a new thing. No. I'm just thinking about, well, the Emperor brought to be my lord, the shaman's doing something, apparently. Yeah. Nah. No. <laughs> no. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. So, Master of Possession, uh, as, tactically, I think it's a very useful unit. I think that it's uh, psychic powers is where the power is, as yeah. with all psychers, yeah. really. Um, the right of possession rule is easy to forget. <laughs> mm. Likely, mm. even if it does come up, you won't remember it because uh, it's so situational. The fact that it can manifest two is great. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's super handy. But otherwise, it's it's a Chaos Lord with a half-decent weapon in the Force Stave. Obviously, there's no weapon options uh, yet, or possibly ever, depending on how they, they decide to go about it. But the Force Stave is Strength plus two, AP minus one, D3, like a Force Stave is. So I mean, anything that does D3 damage as a melee weapon and doesn't have a yeah. hit penalty is pretty decent. It's pretty handy. And this guy fights on threes, you know. If... if yeah, yeah, it can do some damage. It's a sl it's a, it's a mixture between the Lord and, and the um, Sorcerer profile. It's yeah. it's a good profile. I don't know. No good complaints. Profile. Yeah, no complaints. Okay, let's move on to the Greater Possessed, which are probably the thing I'm most excited about in this book. Okay, um, the Greater Possessed are uh, quite powerful possessed. So they have a weapon skill of two plus. They move seven. Uh, Ballistic skill three plus, but that should never be relevant. Strength and toughness five. Five wounds. Five attacks. Fives across the board from strength through attacks. Uh, leadership 8 and a 3 plus save. And, and the thing I think is worth pointing out here is they have the character keyword. Yes. So you can hide this guy behind a bag of meat even with his mm -hmm. big profile. Because mm -hmm. I find a lot of those kind of toughness 5, 6, 4, 5, 6 wound yeah. models, Yes. They if they're not characters, they just don't. A couple mm -hmm. of last cannons and they're gone. So yeah, despite being an elite choice, they're still characters, which is super duper handy. Yeah. Um, the most important rule, really, 
uh, is their locus of power, but we'll get to that. The champion of the host is the first time this unit is set up, all models in the unit must be set up at the same time, but they don't need to be in coherency. So you take these two guys, you take both of them, I'll never get them on camera, you take both of them, um, and you uh, take them as one elite choice. So it's one single elite choice, but it's both characters. So once you're done setting them up, so they have to start in coherency, and then you just split them off, you run them around, you follow the units of possessed, you catch up with those warp talents, you do whatever it is that you need to do. Nah, no, warp get, talents. Get them in the right places. Or, oh, I love warp talents. Um, so, and, so that's, I think that's how the Primaris Lieutenants work as well. Yeah, I think so. And there is quite a bit of competition in that elite mm -hmm. slot. I, I, I tend to find a lot of the things that I want to take come in that uh, slot. Yeah, so it's the same for Chaos. Um, yeah. The elite slot tends to be where the character in the army is. So mm -hmm. it's where your corn berserkers are, it's where your noise marines are, it's where that kind of thing and lives. Characters in flavour, flavor characters in hero. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's yeah. it's a bit of an odd one if you're trying to compete with that, if you are uh, like not Empress children who can, I think, find a way to make noise marines troops. So that's less of an issue for them. Yes. Um, but if, if you're making a characterful army, these, these guys might compete. But if you're making a characterful army, you're probably slipping more into the the fast attack choices anyway, because you mm -hmm. want all that speedy, get in your face, punchy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, possessed are, however, elite choices. So the unit that these are supposed to like match up with actually compete with them. <laughs> right, right, space <laughs> for, yeah. for space in the army. But you know, mm -hmm. that's still good fun. I'll put so, one of these in front of the camera. So let let's talk about this locus of power. Then, what is it that makes you want to take these guys? I see they've got five up demons. They, here. they are demons. They are demons, uh, and they're very powerful units. I think five wounds, five attacks for not many points is very good. They they don't have equipment, so the fact that they are seventy Seven. points. Oh, that's a lot of points. I don't know. That's three plague marines by my standard, that's and that's I, I would take one of those. Seventy all points is great. Right. So yeah, um, they are demonic. They are demons. Uh, they have the demon keyword, which is very key. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a 5 plus invulnerable save on top of their 3 plus armor. And the locus of power is that any legion demon unit, so that includes demon engines, that includes anything that is legion then demon, um, get plus 1 strength. So I desperately want this in my death guard. Um, <laughs> can they take it, James? No, they cannot. No, oh, they no, cannot. No, they can't. And I'm kind of, I don't think I'm glad of it, because I do play death guard, but mm. I think it's, it's an important limiting factor. Well, a lot of those weapons are strength user. Yeah. So being able to get, you know, their yes. plague spitters mm -hmm. on the blight drones and so yeah. forth, their strength user weapons. Uh, that plus one strength is a big deal. And, you know, the plague fact bearers that playing, with plus one strength. Playing Death Guard, a lot of it is trying to find out how you can boost the strength of the models. Yes. <laughs> so having models always oh, fallen over. That's right, he's done. Um, having model, having uh, a, a character that can boost strength would be very important. Um, mm. I think an army like Chaos Space Marines needs it as much, if not mm. more, because yeah. there are a lot, lot more demon keyword units in this book mm. um, that yeah. that are used frequently, like Helldrakes and things like mm. that. So I think that's pretty key. Speaking so of demon any units, <laughs> demon that shares the Legion keyword yeah. with the possessed, if they share the same mark of chaos, yeah. the same Legion, and are a demon, right. And Death Guard and Thousand Sons are the only legions that are forbidden mm. from taking that. Is that right? Uh, Death Guard can't take it, and Thousand Sons can't take them. Yeah, but the others can. Um, well, Chaos Space Marines can take it, and that's it. Basically. Okay. So if it's in the Chaos Space Marine Codex, oh, this, right, is, I this is a supplement into the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Right. It's okay. not into yeah. anywhere else, and that's it. So that's right. all it is. In my head, it all bleeds into no, this one is, another book. Yeah. This, is, this is in the Chaos Space Marine Codex now. It's been yeah. supplanted. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, a new unit that has been updated, so neither of those things, uh, <laughs> an updated unit is Obliterators. So Obliterators previously were relatively cheap, but relatively rubbish. They didn't do a huge amount. Cheap and rubbish units? We yeah, got a lot of um, They were too expensive for how rubbish they were. <laughs> so they, they didn't really have a slot in the army. Mutilators you could occasionally wangle if you were like Mark of Corn. Mm -hmm. And so they were a demon unit that could do some punching, but then you needed to put them in a land raider and blah, blah, blah. It just wasn't great. Okay, as soon as I hear the word land raider, yeah. uh, the word cheap has just gone out of the window. <laughs> yeah, completely. Uh, you uh, you uh, need uh, to put them in a massively expensive las cannon. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so it's not really all that pointful. But obliterators now um, are usable, I would say. I, th I think it's a okay. usable unit. I think they're okay. still too highly pointed, but that'll change with, with some sort of 
uh, chapter approved before I long, think, it won't take long. Or I even think when these the wars have got to come down. So how many points are we talking, James? So they are, obliterators are 115 points a guy. 115 points So before I think they were 75 points a guy, and you had to take a unit of three. So the unit came out at 225, if I remember rightly. Right. And, and I, I think I think it's in on the stats. The stats of two of these are comparable with the stats of three of the old ones. Yeah. And yet and they you can cost take a few them, more points. You can take them in ones as well, which is very important. So previously you had to take a unit of three. You started at oh, three, right. whereas now okay. you can just take one obliterator as a unit. It's not something okay. you're liable to want to do, but it's an option. So if you if you find yourself with 115 points and you don't think that a unit of raptors would be better than this, then you can take an obliterator. Whenever I've got points left over in, in the Death Guard army, I want to know how many Nurgling bases I can get for that, frankly. <laughs> true. And is true, this true. guy as good as six Nurgling bases? I don't know whether uh, he is. Not at holding objectives. Yeah. Certainly at taking people off of objectives. Right, ah, let's push right, back. okay. So, uh, it's uh, Ballistic Skill 3+. plus. I was kind of expecting 4+. plus. I've got to be honest, so I'm kind of pleased that it's 3+. plus. Oh, right, because the Demon Engines yeah. all shoot on 4s, do. don't they? Which is a big problem for them. These guys are Ballistic Skill 3. Their Strength and Toughness 5, 4 Wounds, 3 Attacks. So they're not slouches in combat, but for 115 points you hope they wouldn't. They have Flesh Metal Armor, so they have a 2-plus save. They're, they're Terminators. Nice. Terminators with many more wounds. So you're paying for it, though. Um, you can take one naturally and add another 2 um, and the important part really is their guns, which we'll get to momentarily. They have a 5 plus save for being demons, and they can deep strike, and that's pretty awesome. I mean, they're not really for that, but they can deep strike onto an objective, same as any other unit that you were thinking you might be able to do. Mm. Um, but not within 12. But not within 12 box. of those guys, specifically. Well, that's that's, really, that's a really box. good point, actually. Yeah. If we're playing this, this game, then it, it, people who are playing these, these missions are going to be playing on a 4x4. It's not a 6x4 kind of game. Oh, no. Because they're 750-ish points per arm. Oh, right, you did the work. Uh, other people did the work. Oh, right. <laughs> they're roughly 750. You read something. Points. I did. I heard Excellent. something, actually. Okay. Um, so... Uh, it's a small game, it's not a big game, so you're going to play on a 4x4. Yeah. So that 12 inches will probably cover two thirds of the table. If yeah. You, if you try. Yeah. That's a lot of space. So the fact that a lot of this can deep stroke thanks to being a demon is counteracted. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think there was some criticism about how much these armies, the Space Marine one, seems to be designed to counter. And this is also designed to counter that, is which is a good box. Oh, that would be a good box if that's <laughs> it how would, it works. It? So this is, this is a uh, shooty. That wants to get roughly near you, but not that near you, oh, kind yeah. of army. And this is a, I'm going to charge you and murder you if you're roughly near me. So they stop yeah. the deep strike, but these guys move fast. Yeah. Four inches on that obliterator. Yes, that's not what they're for. <laughs> <laughs> and they can deep strike if they didn't shut that down. They can deep strike, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're, no, they're, they're Cataphract TI Terminator Toughness 5 guys. They're like, they're they're like Nurgle Terminators with a million guns. So they can teleport strike. So um, these these crushing fists are pretty pretty decent weapons they actually, are. aren't they? If you mm. get into combat with them, they are strength five. Uh, if they happen to be near a greater possessed, they're strength six, which takes them up to strength plus one, strength seven, AP minus one, D three damage. So strength attacks. Strength yeah. six in in it is, and there's plenty of toughness three units out there yeah. like uh, Scions who are going to want to drop down near you and take out your gun guys. Yeah, so it's it's a thing. It's a thing. I'm not thinking about punching up rhinos and stuff. Like that, <laughs> it's true, honest. actually. Yeah, so yeah. Being if you could get them up to strength seven with the AP minus one D three and yeah, which is not bad. They just need to be close to this dude. No, well, these guys are probably going to be somewhere else on the battlefield than the Blair is. But okay, yeah. Um, so the important part about these guys really is the flesh metal guns. So they are part of the cult of steel. When this unit is chosen to shoot in the shooting phase or fires Overwatch, roll 3d3, one after the other, to determine the characteristics of the gun. The first is added to 6 to determine strength, so it's strength 6 plus d3. Okay, 7 to 9, that's healthy. Strength 7 to 9 is very good. Very um, healthy. Then you roll for AP, AP d3, AP minus d3, sorry. Um, and the third roll is the amount of damage it does. So you're averaging out, I love averages, so you're on averaging out a strength 8, Minus two AP, two damage. Which is like a battle cannon from a Lehman Russ. It's like... Except this guy's had a few beers before firing his battle cannon. It's like you were designing a weapon to kill intercessors. 
I don't know. I, I mean, I see wounds, what you're saying. Wounds on twos. Yeah. Takes all their yeah. wounds away, and they've only well, got five D3. plus six. Well, D3. I've fired D3 damage at intercessors, yeah. and, and, and Bulgrin and things, and it doesn't... You always get those wasted shots in mm. there where you're chipping away that last wound. Yeah. And these, you're paying for these shots. I mean, this guy's you got are. 130 points, was it? 115? There's, there's psychic powers that allow you to choose these. Ah, oh, now you're talking. <laughs> so there's a psychic power that allows you And does it allow you to choose which one you choose? Uh, let's have a really quick look at that. You can re-roll one of the dice when determining strength, AP, and damage characteristics of flesh metal guns or flesh metal weapons. So particularly if you find that there's multi-wound models, you yes. roll the one for damage, like, do you know what? That's pretty clutch yes. if that's more than yep. that. I'd yeah. like to re-roll that. And then you can add in re-rolls from command points. So you can re-roll mm. two of those across that set of dice. Mm. If it's really like, I need strength eight, and I need AP minus three, and yeah. I need two damage right now, yeah. you can you can make your way there. Especially in the books, uh, the missions that are in the book, which are narrative play. So you can yep. keep using rerolls if you have them. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's all the proper rules out the window. Yeah. Just so, bring what you like. Yes. Spend if, three if, command points and you can have a free assassin. I guess. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, thank you. Some of the demons for free. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, the obliterators, uh, they're random. They're pretty crazy. They're fairly highly pointed. Um, I think when the points come down, not if. I think when I th the I points come down, points. they're going to be good. I think that's a good unit right there. There's, there's, yeah. there's three. Um, the, those are all rolled together, so it's not like you roll for each individual model. You roll for the unit. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can make the rolls work for yeah, you. Yeah, you've got some manipulation. You've got some space for that. If it was a D6, if it was like, this is from 4 plus D6, then there's no manipulation there. But because no. it's a D3, you're never going to go too far wrong. No. Although, I would say strength 7, 8, and 9... Your target priority really changes within that bracket. Mm. What you can wound comfortably with strength seven versus eight, and then over, you know what I mean? There's a like, toughness eight target, like a knight, you don't want to this shoot. This happens before wound. target. Yeah, I think that I think that's mm. that's common to those kind of guns. Yeah. You get to know what the outcome is going to yes. be before yeah. you say, I want to shoot at that. So result. you don't shoot the knight, discover mm -hmm. your strength seven yeah. minus one AP yeah. and one damage. So yeah. That's, that's the obliterators. They also come with these absolutely beautiful new models. Uh, they're way nicer than the old ones, even better than the first ones and the second ones. They just keep making these models better and better. And the fact that they're plastic <coughs> is equally fantastic. Uh, I'm loving these dread naughty feet that they've got as well. They're very uh, reminiscent of, um, what's your Space Marines with big guns? You know, the Centurions. They're very centurions. reminiscent of Centurion feet. Centurions. And yeah, so they've got like fleshy versions of them. Which is also very reminiscent of uh, Hell Brutes. Yeah, they, they seem to bridge feet. that space, don't yeah. they? Between the Hell Brute uh, and, and the Terminator mm -hmm. and the other things that they may be similar to. The problem being that you're paying for it. It's nearly the same points as a good Hell Brute. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's only. What did I say? Uh, I did the maths the other day. It's, it's something like 5 or 15 points less than a Hellbrute with a missile launcher and a LAS cannon, which is a lot more wounds and equivalently tough because of those extra wounds and you've got a LAS cannon and a missile launcher rather than these completely random weapons. But these are assault weapons, aren't they? They're assault six. So I don't know the Space Marine, you know, the, the other psychic powers mm. in there. This could be, could this be a 12 wound bully unit in the middle of the table. If you pump those mm. extra defensive capabilities into them, with a two plus roll safe. them up the table, because yeah. they but can punch hard, they can shoot after mm -hmm. advancing, you know, something to just stick in the middle and yeah. say, deal with me. Are they tough enough for that? They're twice as many wounds as a Terminator, and they're the with, same and they've thing. Got the two ups. They've got the same two up, two up five up. Mm. Um, and with the ability to do things like recover wounds on them with, with spells and stuff like that, then they could really be a unit that sticks it out for a long old time. I'm thinking, actually, with the teleport strike as in as a backfield unit mm. to deep strike in turn yeah. three when the screens move forward, these guys are really hard to deal with. They're going to shoot something. Again, there's better what? units for them. Oh, no. That's the struggle. If you want something that's going to ride into their backfield and charge whatever the hell you like and just blow something up, you've got Helldrakes. You just get that Helldrake back there. It's, it's, it's got the fly keyword, but not flyer. So it can charge ground units, You're and right. it can charge sky units, 
and it, it punches real hard. <laughs> that's, that's a real good unit for Does that. Does it fight? It actually fights. I think it's five attacks. Right. And with a good profile. Right. So I, I think there's better units for it. The obliterators, I think, are a good all-rounder. Again, they need the point drop. Mm. They need that point drop. I'm not I'm not paying 345 points for three of these. No. Maybe in... <laughs> <coughs> Maybe in fluff. Fun games. Oh, for sure. Yeah, in a narrative play, yeah, go for it. I'll, I'll need the re-rolls. To say. <laughs> Teaching somebody how the game works. Yeah. Because when you get that, oh, here's my land right there. Yeah. Look at these one. large impressive models that I've painted well. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, that, it's that kind of thing. So let's look at the real yeah. big boy. That's of... obliterators covered. So we've got the Venom Crawler. And the Venom Crawler is this very attractive gentleman, which I'm going to struggle to actually fit into the camera. Are you it sure it's a boy? I, I don't think it matters anymore. I think it's a machine with a demon in it. I think, uh, especially as Emperor's Children's sexuality is a little a bit of a, a winding path. A winding not so, path? Not so much a straight line. Right. right. So yeah, there's, yeah. There's, a lot, there's a lot going on with this guy. I'm going to leave him there for a little bit because I like seeing him. Um, so, Venom Crawler is a demon engine. It's a new demon engine. So I think a lot of people are be buying this box to get this model. Um, I, ju I think I love those Greater Possessed too much. I don't think I've even spent much okay. time looking at the Venom Crawler yet because of that. Um, I, it's a very cool model. It's a very, very attractive model. And I, I think I'm going to have a couple. <laughs> I, th I, I just... I don't think it's better specifically than a Hellbrute because the Hellbrutes have so much adaptability in the equipment that they can take. You can mm -hmm. choose what you want to do with that. But it's very good. It, it helps that it's a good model. So let's get it's into what it does. It's sleek, though, isn't it? It is. It is. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's very... I don't know. What do you think about it? It takes references from... what? what is it the Defiler? Defiler... But um, none of the sort of gang, jankiness of the... <laughs> yeah. The Defiler looks like it was glued being together a, in reality. It's, <laughs> it's got none of the jankiness of being a model made in 2000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, this thing looks maybe. like it would work mm. in the real world. Yes. I, could I can envisage it moving. Yeah, it, yeah, it's more fiendy as well, and it's got some of the uh, I've got a big bum up in the air thing. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that I love that. that you, it's insectoid. It's very, very cool. Anyway, all right, let's get into the actual so, profile. Oh, yeah, the numbers. The numbers. So um, it has a lot of stars in its profile. It has 10 wounds, toughness 7, so it's pretty great. Uh, weapon skill, ballistic skill 4, but it's a demon engine, you kind of expect Demon that. engines are force. Um, and you can demon forge it using uh, command points to get better at that, and there's spells that get you better at that, and there's various different ways that you can improve it. It's notably also a demon, so stacks with the greater possessed, stacks with spells that affect demons, stacks with everything that you might want to do. If you want to make a whole demon army, you can go for it now. So, it's base strength then... Its base strength is six, but it decreases. It worsens. Profile. Yeah, profiles. Yeah. But it gets plus one for the greater possessed. It does, so it's seven. Up to seven. And its soul flare tendrils are strength user, which is its close combat weapons. Um, and the other weapons are your strength plus, even if they are uh, a shooting weapon. So mm, yeah, you can, I think you the demon engines that. work like that. Gem they? Yeah, they, they use a they plus. They can do, yeah. Uh, no, no, actually. The only yeah. other ones really are close combat ones, and they have like specific weapons. With well, the Nurgle ones, the, mm, the new Nurgle ones. Oh, the new Nurgle user. ones do. Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking of the old Chaos Space Marine ones. And I'm, I'm yeah. That line right now, where the old ones all have, uh, because they're traded over from older editions, their yeah. weapons have profiles. Yeah. Um, except the Morlafid, but that's because it's all close combat. Whereas, yeah, this guy has strength in addition, so if you can add bonuses to that somehow, which there are a few different ways, you can increase its strength. Uh, which means that while near a greater possessed, its fantastic excruciated cannons are actually strength 9. So their strength user plus 2, AP minus 2, D3, assault D3, 36 inch range. It's a very it's long range D3 weapon. D3 last cannon shot. Pretty much, yeah. No, they're less damage, they're, aren't they? It's D3, D3 uh, over, overcharged plasma shots. Yeah. Plus 1, if you, and it turns into a last cannon if you get to the greater possessed. Yeah, the strength nine, and, it, and it, you know, at the moment, knights are everywhere, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Strength nine is, is a, and I think Chaos really struggled to find it. Certainly in my, in my death guard, mm. anything that's toughness eight in a bar starts to have problems with. Yeah. It's also strength eight, so it means it's good against marine equivalents. It's yeah, yeah. It's the these. necrons and whatever it is that you need to face that's toughness four. So strength eight naturally is great. Um, its eviscerating balls are its general close combat weapon. Uh, which are also strength plus two, but AP minus three, three flat damage. 
Three damage. Three flat damage with attacks starting at four. Four attacks hitting on fours. Four attacks hitting on fours. Um, so it's going to hit twice. Yeah, without any bonuses. Yeah. So every time you sit down and you think about uh, what a demon engine is going to do, you think, how does my demon forge affect it? Because it's re-rolls. It's re mm. to hit wound. Re -hit well, all of them are just ones. Um, I would need to check that. I don't remember that correctly enough. Mm. But it's an important use of a command point. It I is. haven't played Chaos for a while. But it's, it's very powerful. Um, and also the spells that you get are super helpful for it because they're Absolutely. demon boosting spells and demon boosting but it looks units. like even just, just sort of rolling the dice and hoping the numbers come up even on its own you do good. six damage to a space marine yeah. equivalent character yes yeah will that, they be minus three which means so that's dead save us on a six plus at this point yeah yeah. unless it's got an involved save unless it's got an involved save which just messes with all the numbers it does even so and then but it, that's his four attacks Plus those soul flare tendrils I spoke about a minute ago, which are the strength user AP minus two two damage attacks. You get two extra attacks with the soul flare tendrils. So this this bad boy's got six attacks. It's got six, six attacks. Six multi damage attacks. At minimum damage two AP minus two. I've got to say I don't, I don't like that idea. No, it's not great. It's, it's not. A, I love it. No, I like to run up and punch things. I'm yeah. a big fan of that, especially anything with the vehicle keyword. Yes. Normally that's something I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Probably not. No, it's this, this, this isn't going to be with... like fight last or no, any, any of that, like that horrible stuff. Going nothing on. like that. Okay. Uh, so it is demonic, so it has a five plus and vulnerable save, which is great, especially for uh, something that is a vehicle. It's not a walker, so the rules that are relevant to walkers don't affect it, but that's not super, it's not that much mm. of a problem. It, it looks like a walker, and you'd think it was a walker, but you could say the same thing about a lot of tower vehicles, so yeah, whatever. Um, it has a rule called Devour of Souls, which is metal as hell. At the beginning of each of your turns, the model regains one lost wound. So it constantly regenerates wounds at the beginning of each of your turns. And then in combat, if you manage to destroy any enemy models, you regain another lost wound. So you, any, you're not a unit, just not a unit, any, model. any enemy Kill model. Kill a model. Yes. So Shoot a guardsman. If you are in combat, uh, it's... Oh, it's the end of the fight phase in which it destroys an enemy model. Right. So, so you if fight. you if you are in combat, you are regenerating two wounds a turn. So on a toughness seven vehicle, you're regenerating two wounds a turn, most likely. If and, you have something and then to there's kill. probably a spell that can heal it somewhere. Yeah, there, most or... likely. <laughs> most likely. There is a, actually there is yeah D three wounds. D three. D three. So um, okay. or it, three to five. So you have to remove a wound from something else. You trade wounds. Oh, you swap. Yeah. So you take a wound off one model. Doesn't say friendly or enemy, just one model. You remove a wound, does a mortal wound to that model, and it gives another uh, demon D3 wounds back. Right. If you remove that wound from a warp smith, it's flat three. You take three off the warp smith. You take one off the warp smith and give a demon engine three. Mm. It's pretty powerful. So, anyway, yeah, so that this thing can heal five wounds a turn. <laughs> Up to. With it's a, a shame that doesn't have a basket on the back with just some <laughs> cultist in chains just being tossed into its you into know, it a furnace mm. in the back. Well, now I was more thinking clasping jaws, to be honest. Oh, looking yeah. at him munching them in at the front. Yeah. It's, is there some admin rule about servitors that do that? I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, technically, they can lose a servitor to heal oh, yeah. some of their oh, other well. vehicles. Like, anyway. Clearly, they're cannibalizing him for parts. Oh, yeah. No. But. Adeptus Mechanicus are the good guys, so that's... Oh, oh right, sorry, obviously. yeah, you heard it here. <laughs> They're the good guys. So yeah, you can heal a bunch of wounds every turn if you really try. Yeah. Uh, they also have Reservoir of Demonic Energy. You add one to the result of any demonic ritual summoning made by a Legion Master of Possession while they're within six inches of one of these bad boys. So that's so, really triggered to this codex. Yeah. That spellcaster and that model. Mm -hmm. Demonic Ritual is a rarely used mechanic. It's yeah. on every single Chaos character, but because... Um, we're more talking about the competitive side of things. Mm. You're going to be playing match play. So if you're playing match play, you have to pay for those points of summoned models. If you're playing open play or narrative play, this is a great little book because you can summon a bunch of extra units, and, but we can do the same for them. It's like more reinforcements turn up. You can just make a mission yeah. out of your head yeah. where I can get 400 blood letters, but you can also get a unit back every time they get destroyed kind of thing. And, yeah. and there's an objective somewhere. And, you can have and there's a reason but, people don't tend to play those games. Yeah, because without a lot of sort of pre-discussion mm -hmm. and there's no balance in those. You're games. never gonna rock up to a gaming club 
and be able to say, I would like to play this narrative mission. Would you oh, join well, I will me? summon my blood letter, which I didn't pay yeah, for. Yeah, my blood thirster. Oh, right. My blood thirster, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's Rotigus, so you just yeah. pulled him out of the ether. It's a nice rule. I don't think it's going to see much play. It's going to be easily for So I was wondering about that, because I've, I've not used the, the summoning rule, right. but I wonder how much, because there's several things in different codices that can mm -hmm. slightly improve demonic summoning. As a deep strike alternative, or is there some play in it, summoning? It requires the character to have not moved. The, so the, the, who, the person who is doing the demonic ritual has to have not moved. So it's um, not... And that happens in the movement phase. When you want to do it is early in the game. You want to deep strike something close to them so it can charge hard. Uh, it can't be within nine inches of an enemy model. So right. it's an equivalent to deep striking, basically. But, but, you but with, with extra requirements. And the fact that you have to have what is probably a psycho or an important combat character nowhere near the enemy. Mm. You're not moving up. You can't advance, you can't do anything. Again, there's a spell in this book that allows you to do that. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's getting around a lot of these, these more janky mechanics. But in, in, supposing in a bigger tournament where you don't necessarily know what you're up, to, mm. up against, presumably with the, the one thing it's got over other deep strike is you can have a sideboard of units. Yes. And you can choose which of those you use based yeah. on your situation. Yeah. But so far, it doesn't seem that that, 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 um, that that works, but maybe these things might push them into a... It also creates a non-battle-forged army, because you can't take the demons with the Heretic Astartes keyword. So you'd have to choose the Chaos Overriding keyword, at which point you'd lose some other benefits. Do they count as in the detachments if they're reinforcement points? I don't know. I've yeah. never tried. I mean, it, it brings up an interesting point. I d I've never tried. Tell us in the comments, I guess. I have no idea. Um, so the only other remaining rule that it has is that it explodes. It explodes on a 5+, plus, and each unit within 6 inches suffers D3 model wounds. So D3. It's a, it's a slightly bigger than usual explosion, slightly more likely than usual. And that is all the units that we have. Um, yeah, so there are... It's an interesting... Um, you can't take, despite it being in here, <laughs> you, could, you couldn't take this force, as it is in the book, as... Um, World Eaters, you can't take them as the corn keyword specific legion because you can't take the Master of Possession. You can't have the Psyche keyword. Oh yeah, because he's a Psyche. <laughs> he's a Psyche. So, so it says you're allowed to take these units in a, in a World yes. Eaters legion. Yeah, it shows the legion traits for World Eaters, um, but you couldn't take it if you wanted to. But this is, uh, what do they call it, historic forces, I think is what they, the term they use in the missions. So this is, uh, you're recreating the battles as they were rather than taking forces that you like. So I think this is probably just a copy and pasted box mm. where they oh, tell yeah, you some yeah. information that you might want from another book. Yeah. And the, the disciplines and what And the expectation is this is a Black Legion battle. Um, the expectation is that these are Black Legion, yes. Yeah. The expectation is that. Um, I'm doing mine as Empress Children because I like the uh, going first in combat. Yeah, I don't like that. No. I don't like you doing that. No. It's probably the thing. Yeah, but you're Space Wolves, so you fight harder anyway. So we're, we're leveling out a little. Is yours on charge? Uh, you know, charge, were charged, heroically intervened, on a Tuesday, nice. plus nice. one, nice. that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So <laughs> effectively, plus one to hit first round of combat. Yeah. There's a relic in there. Mm -hmm. But we can talk about that. We'll talk the, about the, that the later. Okay. Harder. Well, that's, that, that's um, the Chaos Space Marine side. Have you got a favourite though, James? I mean, we've been through the models. Do I have a favourite? What, you know, if, if you... There's an island disc scenario. One of these guys is going gonna, is gonna to be on your mantelpiece and is painted by something beautiful. I, I don't think I can say Greater Possessed more times. You, you're that <laughs> I, really, about the I love them. I think they're a great unit. I think um, in this army, the places that you're going to be taking most of your units from are fast attack and heavy support. You're right. You have less competition because you're not trying to take non-demon units, mm. you have less competition in the elite slot. Right. So you, you might end up taking a unit of possessed, but you've got four of these guys just running around the table buffing everything that you have. A unit of possessed? You, you think they've got blood in it? I, I think they're okay. The, the, I think the, the, at, the old at, five guys in a box? Yeah. At strength six, I think they're, they're very good. They look like somebody took a bat and a space marine and threw them at a wall. Yes. And right. then and then put a demon in it to see, like, what yeah, yeah, to see what happens. See what happens. Right. So yeah, no, I think they've got some play. I don't think they're warp talents. I love warp talents. Warp you, talents yeah. are a pair of lightning claws on a raptor or a, or an assault marine. I, I think they're great. They're good points. They deep strike. They've got five plus and multiple saves. 
So they make their way through that hail of las cannons that quite frequently looks at them a little better. I don't I'm know. not a fan of las cannons. You're not a fan of las cannons. It's the go-to weapon for it obliterates a thing. It, it, there's there's yeah. nothing it's not comfortable shooting <laughs> at. And I don't... I feel like you need to make a choice, you know? Yeah. We're going to start waffling again. Thank you very we much, everyone. Let's go for the video. Uh, next will be uh, Legion Traits and Things, if you watch it in that order. This video, as with all our videos, brought to you by Argy Count, your local gaming store for all your geeky needs.